Hey, good morning and happy Tuesday. I can hear myself in my headphones, so I'm just going to take those off for a second because that is annoying. Anyways, welcome to Breakfast with Bridget. Br Bridget is actually off this week, so I will be filling in for her. I am Crystal Moyer. You may recognize me from New Six Mornings. Um, also, I do insider stories, which is a lot of fun. And we have a lot to talk about today on Breakfast with Bridget. So obviously, today's a big day here in Florida, the presidential primaries. Today, actually, the, the polls just opened about 30 minutes ago. So millions of Floridians will be hitting uh, those election offices. And it's not just about the Republicans voting for which president they want to represent them. It's also about some local races, some important races. And New Sixes, Ezzy Castro will be joining us to talk a little bit about that. Also, an important topic here, colon cancer colon cancer. We do have a nurse practitioner who will be telling us about some of the symptoms um, and how you can do some preventative care uh, to help out as well as what you need to know if you need to get tested for that. Also, spring break is here. We've been seeing a lot of issues, especially on the coast with our beaches. You know, we saw uh, someone pull out a gun uh, over in New Smyrna Beach. So Molly Reed actually did a ride along with one of the police chiefs to see what they're doing to kind of crack down on that bad behavior along the beaches during spring break. And... We have some free stuff to give away, you know, since I'm the insider and all, you know, I got to give out some free things. So I'll be talking about what you can do and how to enter to win some free zoo tickets if you're looking for something to do with your family over spring break and heading towards Easter. All right, let me put my headphones on, see if it works again. Nope, still hear myself. But I need to hear meteorologist Jonathan Kegas. So let's go ahead and bring him in because we are dealing with the first day of spring but not spring-like weather. That is correct, Crystal. Big cold front came through last night. If you've been outside, you know the difference. You felt the difference. And we are going to break that all down here. Again, over the next couple of days, we are going to be on the chilly side. The coldest night of the bunch settles in tonight. So Ooh. this is just, just wait. Just wait. <laughs> <laughs> just wait. Your face. I can't see your face. It's double me on this on this uh, phone that I'm. It's watching. okay. Just know that I'm looking at you and I'm giving you the surprise face. So, I know <laughs> it's crazy because typically, like the last few years, anyway, once we've gotten to this point, it's been the runaway blowtorch. We're talking about '90s all the time. Like, yeah. But now where it's like, hey, winter's like, don't forget about me, guys. I'm still here. <laughs> We're still the revenge. We're what still did you friends. call it? Winter revenge. Winter revenge. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's been here. I mean, certainly we've we've had the cloudiest Florida on record, the cloudiest sky on record. Dating, I think th that d data goes back the last eighty four years. Mm -hmm. Um, because you know the me, it's been eighty four years. So it's been the cl cloudiest winter in eighty four years wow. since uh, those records began. Uh, and now the cold doesn't want to leave. It hasn't been frigid this year. Like we haven't had like below freezing temperatures like reach Orlando, but it's been cool. Because the clouds play that catch-22. It keeps it right. warmer overnight, relatively speaking. And then it doesn't allow the sun to warm us up in the afternoon. So it's that catch-22. So it's been cool. It's been wet. Although, as I just ramble on, just just, just stop me. when, when I, I, I like to be weather-wise, Jonathan. So keep going. This is important stuff here. We need to know how to dress. And people are here for spring break. So so give it to us. I see what you did there with weather-wise. Thanks for the, for the pun. Um for the show coming up after this but anyway <laughs> anyway now i'm getting sidetracked uh where was i now I'm you're talking about off. the weather today because obviously we have yes. some rain coming up later on this week right we do we do yeah so beyond the cool down we're going to be talking about a system coming through and that's towards the end of the week i'll show you that let me get to my map let me switch my maps here and i can actually show you that now this is going to be a good thing the lawns do need it we have been on the drier side after a kind of damp and wet november december january uh we have dried things out a little bit but here is our next system you see it kind of brewing over there by houston and dallas this is fast forwarding to thursday we're gonna be dry on thursday um whoops hold on hit the wrong button stand by <laughs> it That's happens it's be at eight o'clock this morning um Hold on, I'm gonna find it. I am one here. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna turn. Um, actually, I can't turn my camera. Can I turn my camera? Hold on. Let's. I'm gonna show you real time. Okay. If I can figure this thing out. 
Hold on. I know I'm vertical. Whoops. I don't know if it lets me turn the camera. Okay, it might not let me turn the camera. I would, That's okay. okay. Hold on. I'm going to show you. Okay. See all these little, like, squares in there? Yeah. Those are the scenes that I have. Our weather computer is like a PowerPoint, almost. It's it's just like a PowerPoint presentation. A lot of so graphics. Scenes. Yeah. So I am one that's just like, I, I'm a person that has like 400 tabs open <laughs> on my computer. So that's exactly what I have in my show. So whenever I accidentally went back to the beginning of the show, okay, I got to go figure out. And there it is. That's what I so want to So much to scroll through, Jonathan. Oh, my goodness. And you guys create all of these graphics. I don't think people realize that. We do. And on a day like today and yesterday when there's a lot going on, there's a lot of graphics uh, in there. And then there's just some kind of cleaning, uh, some spring cleaning that you have to do <laughs> to kind of get rid of the slides once you, once you don't need it. But anyway, all right, we'll go back to the maps and stuff that you really want to see. So here's the deal over the next couple of days. Uh, that system is going to slide through from about Houston and then all the way to the eastern Gulf of Mexico. And then there are those rain chances increasing through the day on Friday. Now, there's still some uncertainty as to who gets the heaviest. It does look like the heaviest may focus on South Florida. Still, though, our rain chances are going to go up. And that is going to be a really, really good thing if you are an allergy sufferer. I mean, it's about time. The next couple of days, it's still going to be rough. Thursday and Friday, it's a subtle difference. But then look at Saturday. We at least get back into the low category for the first time. And geez, I can't remember. Some relief, I mean, you're finally. Basically, you're basically shoveling the stuff off your lawn. Mm -hmm. It's nuts. It's crazy out there. So that's what I have for you uh, for that. I will show you, too. I mean, we're, we're, we've talked about the cold, right? I'll show you what it's going to be tonight. There's a little load. Wow. Down. I mean, 30s, Crystal. Okay, you know, I, I told you earlier during the show, if you're watching the morning show with us, I'm not going to complain because, you know, we could be dealing with snow. We could be in the Northeast. We could be somewhere where it snows during the winter. So I will not complain about the 40s. But I will say these roller coaster temperatures, I don't know how much more my air conditioning and heater can take because every day and every morning and night I'm switching it. Heat, you know, cool, heat, cool, yes. heat, cool. My husband's like, stop touching it. <laughs> Use the blanket. You gotta stay comfortable. I know it's it is crazy though. It's amazing how much a house warms up when it's ninety degrees outside. Yeah, and it cools down when it's back into the forties. It is crazy. Uh, I think this ride might continue for another couple of weeks. I was just kind of dabbling into some longer range stuff, and we might have another cool shot in us uh, as we transition into April. Okay. So we'll see more ups and downs uh, coming on the pipeline. On that roller coaster of Florida weather. That's right. <laughs> I Keep love on, it. Keep on riding it. Well, thank you so much, Jonathan. Again, you can check out Weather Rise right after breakfast with Bridget. And what a treat to see some of the behind the scenes look there with your graphics and everything that you guys are doing over in the weather department. So thank you for that. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So thank you so much, Jonathan. Now we want to turn over to traffic because obviously spring break, people want to see what things are like out there on the roadway. So let's bring in Trooper Steve, who is already in results one, ready to go, ready to get on patrol. Good morning. Good morning. I swear watching uh, Jonathan was like watching the Blair Witch Project. It was like... <laughs> right. He's a meteorologist, okay? Oh. Not a photographer. <laughs> I was like... I was like, bro, I'm going to bring you in one of these so you can use this. Candace uses it. I was getting a headache. I was like <laughs> watching him all over the place. My he's got gosh. a lot to do back there. While he's doing this, he's also doing cut-ins on TV. So, you know, yeah. give him some grace. I love, I love how you said, too, because most people think, like all of a sudden the the meteorologists just show up on TV and there's graphics there, but they single handedly produce their own shows and you yeah. fill in for traffic too. I make my own shows between each commercial. We're making stuff. So uh, major props to Jonathan for giving us some really accurate information uh, yesterday. I walked out this morning and I prepped myself. I had my t-shirt because I don't, I get, you know, you know, I get a little spiffy right when I get to work, but I had my fleece on. I walked outside and I was like, Ooh, it is not yesterday. It is definitely not. <laughs> 
So obviously <laughs> we're talking a little bit about traffic because uh, construction was going on earlier this morning and maybe some new folks are in town for spring break and we've been dealing with some crashes the past few days. So what's traffic looking like now? Right now, uh, I'd say average. So DOT camp. So Jonathan said I was during our cut-ins. He's like, the skies are beautiful. And then he tossed to me and I go, yep. And that means nothing when it comes to our roadways because it could be a crystal clear day. It could be pouring outside and people are still going to screw it up. So this is US 441 at John Young Parkway. Like Jonathan said, it's beautiful outside, y'all. But just north of this intersection, we do have a problem. So southbound Forest City, a.k.a. 434, right at the intersection to Edgewater, uh, where the Wawa is located, just south of a school zone there. So the southbound lanes are blocked. Northbound, you're perfectly fine. You're going to run into a problem there. Uh, OCSO, Orange County Sheriff's Office out there. FHP not on scene yet. So just avoid that as much as possible. Downtown Orlando, we're seeing some east and westbound delays in the metro area. When I say metro, I'm talking the hub, the downtown. That's that busy, busy area. Uh, no crashes, but it's all spring break travel. Like you said, Crystal, they're out and about. Not bad drive time, though, for Tuesday in the morning on a weekday. 22 minutes, Osceola Parkway to Colonial. 21 coming from Lake Mary. Need you to be careful out there. Two crashes, uh, be careful. JYP and Presidents. No spring breakers should be traveling through that area. It's all residential and industrial. OBT and Holden, we have some uh, minor delays there with pedestrian uh, crossing as well. So be careful. Brevard, where the beaches are, we're doing pretty good this morning. People take it nice and easy. We've been covering, uh, whether it's Brevard County Sheriff's Office or way up in Volusia, uh, things are clear, but the PDs have been busy. Uh, reporter Molly Reed uh, riding along with New Smyrna Beach Police Chief out there. Beach traffic, not bad, but you need to make sure that you're paying attention to all the traffic rules. I preach that the minor traffic violations can kind of lead to the big crashes. So as long mm -hmm. as we're taking care of ourselves out there, we need to be careful. 95 looking good. And Crystal, right now you're clear all the way up to Palm Coast. So our beaches are looking good. Our main roadways are looking good. Uh, just some minor stuff out there. Edgewater, I'm hoping we'll be back open here shortly. It doesn't look too bad. Uh, it's just we're a little spread thin at the moment, so I think uh, response time is a little high for okay. uh, some of the troopers out there this morning. But uh, today uh, at 8.30 after WeatherWise with Jonathan Kagas, uh, you're like great at plugging all of our franchises. <laughs> um, I was watching and I was like, oh, Crystal's smooth this morning. And um, uh, we're going to be talking about honking. Uh, where you're allowed to do it, when you're not allowed to do it, what the law says, what it was designed for. And uh, I'll tell you a little story. If you tune in at 830, uh, when I was Trooper Montiero with the Florida Highway Patrol on what I would do on craft scenes. Not everyone will like this story, but I know uh, if you are a fan of me and how I deliver news and maybe un poquito sarcasm, uh, you'll enjoy uh, the 8.30 stream today of a story that I had when I was working the road, but the laws have changed, so uh, we'll just talk about it today. How about that? Awesome. Well, aprendo espanol, so I know un poquito means small. I'm learning a little bit there. Yeah, but that's uh, all I got for you. That's all I got. That's <laughs> it. My mom okay. would not be proud. We will practice because I'm working on that. So I can't wait to see that Trooper Steve on patrol. A little look into some of Trooper Steve's adventures as a trooper with the Florida Highway Patrol. So I'd love to hear about that. Uh, we will be tuning in here soon. So thank you so much. Bye. Be safe. All right. Now we're turning to election 2024 because about 45 minutes ago, polls opened for the presidential primary race. And I know what you're thinking, you know, obviously for the Republicans, GOP voters will be out at the polls voting for who they want to run for a Republican Party for the White House. But there will be other local races on the ballot today, which is why it's so important for you to know certain areas have really important um ballots that will make some decisions throughout the community. So New Six's Zezi Castro will tell us a little bit about those communities where everybody will have the opportunity to vote. Our presidential primary here in Florida is today. That means the election is only open to registered Republicans. Despite former President Donald Trump securing the Republican nomination last week, his formal rivals, like Governor Ron DeSantis and South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley, remain as choices because of a state deadline that put them on the ballot before they dropped out of the race. 
It's election day, and we're beyond ecstatic. Um, as you can see in the, in the horizon, right now our circuit riders are picking up their supplies to go out to all 207 locations. Since the Florida Democratic Party only submitted one nominee, President Biden, he automatically becomes the party's preferred presidential candidate, so no primary is needed. Keep in mind, though, there are several important races across central Florida that include the city of Winter Park, Edenville, and Flagler Beach. All right. Thank you so much, Ezzy. So she was out there live from the Orange County Supervisor of Elections Office, which is not a polling place. Uh, they do have signs out there. So make sure that you check to see where your polling location is. And polls will be open until 7 p.m. tonight. So very important there. Make your vote count. And if you need some information about uh, maybe what's on the ballot in your area, you can head to clickorlando.com. We do have a whole section for results 2024 with all the information and important things you need to know before you head out to the polls. All right. So turning to a really serious topic here, we're talking about colorectal cancer. It's the second leading cause of cancer death in the U.S. And right now we have uh, Justine Caroda live with us, uh, joining us. She's an Orlando nurse practitioner with Marathon Health. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. I know this is a topic that's really difficult to talk about because a lot of people don't want to talk about colon cancer, and but it's something that's very important that people need to keep an eye out, especially if they have a family history. So tell me a little bit about colon cancer and what you've seen as a nurse practitioner. Well, most importantly, colon cancer is one of the most preventative cancers. So it's really vital for people to get screened. Um, a lot of people want to wait until there's a problem to go get checked out. If you go for your annual check checkups and you have healthy screenings and providers are really kind of gung-ho about getting keeping people healthy and getting people healthy mm -hmm. then you should be able to identify things earlier rather than later yeah and obviously when we're talking about screenings we're talking about colonoscopies or what other different screenings are there and when do you need to get screened is there a certain age group or if you have family history when do you need to go out and get checked for this type of thing well the recommended ages are between 45 and 75. Um, that's changed. Only a few years ago, the age was 50. But we're seeing a rise in incidence of um, colon cancer amongst younger people under the mm. age of 50 um, for a variety of reasons. So it's really important for people to get screened younger. Um, if you have a family history of colon cancer, then there's some special circumstances that they start looking at screening you earlier. Um, unfortunately, I've had uh, a few patients um, who have developed colon cancer in their 20s and 30s. And so it's really vital for people to know the signs and symptoms and make sure that they get checked out early um, and share with their provider some of the symptoms they're experiencing so that way they can get checked earlier. Now, as far as getting checking is concerned, the gold steal is a colonoscopy. Um, I personally recommend it um, for a variety of my patients because a colonoscopy is actually visualizing the whole colon and rectum. If they see anything, I always tell them, if they see anything while they're there, they can take it out. You've already decreased your chances of colon cancer just by having a polyp removed, mm -hmm. which at that stage might not seem too bad, but if left in there to grow, it can cause major problems. And obviously when we're thinking about, you know, colon cancer and who it's affecting, is it primarily men, women? Is there, you know, a majority of one that's mostly affected by colon cancer? The rates are higher in men, um, but women are kind of coming up closely behind them. Um, we're seeing it pretty much across the board at same ages with the younger groups. Um, a lot of people are wondering, well, why is it that younger people are developing colon cancer? It's not really clear cut, but we do know that there are certain things that people can do to help prevent them from, or at minimum, lowering their risks. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, unfortunately, especially post-COVID, we lead a pretty sedentary lifestyle. So get up and get moving. That's one of the primary things. Uh, making sure that you are eating adequate fruits, vegetables, whole grain foods, think higher fiber. That's very beneficial to you. And unfortunately, in my practice, I see most people ask, do you get a minimum of like five to seven servings of fruits and vegetable a day? And it's usually a resounding no. And so that's one of the easiest things to kind of help combat and prevent things. Um, also having um, a history of being overweight, obese, um, if you're a smoker, if you drink um, alcohol heavily, those are some of the other things that are associated with the rising risk in the colorectal cancer in the community now. So people need to eat better, get moving and get screened while you're healthy. 
And what are some of the symptoms of colorectal cancer? I know when you're thinking of, of what it is, it has to do with your digestive tract. So what are some of the symptoms that people can look out for when they say, mm, I should probably get this checked out? Well, some of the more common things that drive people in are changes in stool pattern, whether that's diarrhea, constipation, they might have some abdominal bloating, they might have abdominal pain, things like that. But those are still very general. Mm -hmm. So we don't always jump to that. Um, but it gives us a chance to look closer. Some of the things that are a little bit more insidious might be some rectal bleeding. You might have a change in how your stool looks. Is it black? Is it thick? Um, tarry like is another um, way people describe it. Are you feeling really tired? Um, now, people don't even think about that as being a sign of cancer, you know, but if you're slowly bleeding from a cancer um, mass in your colon, it starts to affect your blood counts, your hemoglobin, your hematocrit go down. So you start to feel tired. Um, some people start to notice that they're losing weight and they're not really quite sure. And so those are some of the things that we kind of look at and we say, hey, let's take a closer look and see what might be going on with you. Now, is this something they need to talk to their primary care physician about, especially if they're having these symptoms, or is there a specific doctor they need to go to when they need to schedule a colonoscopy? I always urge people to start with their primary care provider because they're going to ask even much more detailed questions to kind of make sure that they go down the right path and they can actually start the process of some other types of screening work um, initially. Then what you would do is get referred off to a gastroenterologist who might do a little bit more detailed evaluation. And those would be the people that look at scheduling for a colonoscopy. Now, colonoscopy is not the only testing thing. Um, like I said, that is the gold seal. There are some DNA still tests that people could do. A lot of people know about the dancing box. Mm -hmm. um, so that's an option. Um, I prefer people get the colonoscopy, um, but there are some people just really, really nervous and scared about it. And that's a conversation they should have with their primary care provider about what's the best option for them. Yeah. Again, if someone has all the signs and symptoms, maybe they have a family history or maybe they some, have other cancers, then that's definitely someone I would say, no, we really need to strongly consider a colonoscopy for you. I know whenever I have like friends or family who are scheduled to get a colonoscopy, it's always like, oh my gosh, I have to go get that done. Like I'm scared. I don't want it to hurt, things like that. So I think it's important to keep that conversation going because any preventative measure you could take will help in the end. So we thank you so much, Justine Carota. She is Orlando Nurse Practitioner with Marathon Health for giving us this important information. And again, if you have any questions, go to your primary care doctor and ask about this. Uh, anything else that you wanted to add before we leave here? Yeah, go get screened. If you go get your annual checkups, that should be part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. But if you know you have a family history of colorectal cancer, go be proactive. Go talk to your provider about getting screened. All right. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Yay. Appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. Yeah, have Thank a great you. day, guys. Bye-bye. Very important information there. And I know it's really difficult to talk about that because, you know, colon cancer, who, who wants to bring that up with conversation, but definitely make sure to bring that up with your family and friends to prevent, you know, uh, any illness to get any further if they do have it or if they need to get checked up. All right, switching gears here, spring break, we've been talking about this, a lot of issues along the beaches. Now we saw uh, there was a shooting over in Jacksonville Beach, but down in New Smyrna Beach, remember last week, a teen pulled out a gun in a large group of spring breakers, and that caused a big conversation of how law enforcement is going to keep our coastal areas safe. A lot of people going to the beaches to enjoy their spring break, some not doing anything good there. So New Six's Molly Reed wrote along with the police chief of New Smyrna Beach about what steps they're taking to keep that area safe. We're applying constant pressure to Mm -hmm. the spring breakers so that they know that we're here. Even a cloudy, rainy day is not going to stop spring breakers, and it also isn't stopping New Smyrna Beach Police. Where do you run into the most problems? Is it here on the beach or is it on land? So right now it's raining, but yesterday every section of the beach had groups of up to 100 kids so there's probably a thousand kids down here i hopped in the car with chief eric feldman to see how they are handling the crowds this year our folks are working 12 hour shifts and many of them are working up to two weeks straight without a day off feldman took us down flagler avenue where police were posted on every corner and then down the beach where they're every few feet on foot and parked their command post set up at the end of flagler avenue with cameras watching from all angles and already catching unruly behavior Behavior just days into the peak of spring break. Three guns confiscated and over 360 traffic citations written. 
We've had 20 arrests on the, what I called the hard top, so in the city. And I believe the beach has had a hundred arrests on the beach. All three guns it, were related to drugs. It's all related to yeah. drugs, so really yep. it's just. It, it's drug dealers. Yeah. It's drug dealers who see these kids and, and they want to come here and make money, but they want to uh, carry a gun. Just last Thursday, a 16 year old pulled out a gun on the beach. Detectives found he was selling drugs too. He's now being charged as an adult. Feldman says this is where their undercover teams really come into play. What we're looking for are the people that are coming into town to prey on the kids. Feldman says over the last two years, they've seen a major growth in people bringing bad business to the beach and unruly teenagers. Like many Florida cities, they are now showing less tolerance this year with the hopes of making it it's safer for those behaving. The last couple years we've done stories with the youth that did say, you know, there is a, a good majority of the kids who are behaving though. Yeah. Would you still this year stay the same? Yeah, it's been interesting. So I still think that a lot of the kids that come here are perfectly fine. They're coming here to hang out with their high school friends mm -hmm. and go to the beach. And that's perfectly okay. But unfortunately, there's those kids that ruin it for everybody. In New Smyrna Beach, Volusia County, and Molly Reed getting results, New Six. Man, I wish I had more time with you guys. We've got to wrap this up. So thank you for joining us for Breakfast with Bridget. I'm Crystal Moyer filling in this weekend. Before we leave, though, I know we all want some good stuff, some freebies, right? Don't forget to head to clickorlando.com slash insider. You still have ch uh, time to enter to win four tickets to the Central Florida Zoo and Botanical Gardens. Hippity Hop Adventure on March 30th. It's incredible. A lot going on there. They've got a DJ. They've got treats. Uh, you get to see the cool animals there. So you'll get to go there and enter for free. Uh, we'll be announcing the winner on Wednesday. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you at noon.